I got a new light. I picked up a uh, Falcon Eyes, and uh, despite Jesse's terrible luck with his Falcon Eyes, it just stopped working. I don't like. It just stopped working. Just completely out of nowhere. I don't really know what to do. That was an expensive light. Ugh. Picked one up because I know a few other people that have them and don't have any issues. And for the cost, and with it being bicolor, the output that it has. It's a great light and I use it a lot right now as an accent light just behind my monitor when I'm, uh, when I'm editing a ton, which I have been lately because work has been absolutely insane, which has been incredible. Uh, it's really been hurting my riding. I have not gotten out and done much of that, but um, I do have three or four YouTube videos that are all shot. Uh, some are almost all edited. I have a Locals episode that I'm this close to being done. But uh, today I got to head down up here later pick up a new monitor for the studio. I finally took my Drobo back down, or I am taking it down. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pick it up in a bit because this room probably sounds terrible. Oh, hey bike. Maybe, maybe someday we'll ride again. All right, before I leave too, I gotta show you this because I'm proud of this. That lettuce, that is some tasty looking lettuce. I just picked fresh lettuce from my garden. Nothing better. I just had to share, I'm proud. So like I said, back at home, plenty of stuff is going on right now. I need some keys. One of which is that I was actually signed on to a documentary series that I'll be shooting from basically, oh, which way do I need to go? I think this way. From now until potentially December. Uh, it's 60 guaranteed days on this doc series. And uh, so that's, Great for consistent work. Um, so basically I'm kind of on call with this one. I could just find out a few days in advance that I have to be out on a shoot. Got a new 4K monitor. Uh, it's a Dell UltraSharp 27 4K USB-C monitor. I don't know the mall name, I'll throw a, a link up or something somewhere. But uh, this guy's nice because hopefully I won't need to remember my power cable for my MacBook because it's supposed to be able to charge my MacBook Pro right off of the monitor. So uh, that's great. So I'm gonna set this up. All right, so we got base plate, cables. Let's uh, move you over here. That probably works a little bit better. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna rearrange this because uh, there's Good. Just checked and the monitor does have enough power to fully charge my 2018 MacBook Pro. So that's pretty sweet because the one thing that I do from time to time is actually forget to bring my laptop charger with me to the studio. So now I don't have to worry about that. Oh. Oh. All right, so I figured now that I finally can, now that all of my NDAs uh, that I can talk about have kind of expired, I figure I'd give you a quick recap of what happened this spring. So spring has absolutely exploded for the film industry and I was able to get back to work with Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. We shot a four or five day uh, web series where Akil Augustine, uh, who's the Raptors host, as well as hosting a whole bunch of other things at Scotiabank Arena, was going through different wellness, mental and physical wellness uh, activities, uh, just things to, kind of get us through the lockdown as it was still happening and kind of encouraging people to get outside uh, and explore 
different opportunities within um, health and wellness. Uh, he did cupping, he did cryotherapy, he looked at different healthy eating styles and uh, it was a really interesting series to be a part of and I will leave a link in the description below for that series if you want to check that out. I was also super fortunate after working with Bauer Hockey for the last three or four years uh, that they reached out and actually asked myself and Josh Laszlo who co-directed the commercial that we shot for the Hyperlite line of products, which was absolutely wild and we managed to pull off a pretty cool, really clean uh, commercial on a pretty tight budget, which we were pretty, uh, pretty proud of in the end. So that was a ton of fun to work on and uh, we were able to pull out the big guns, shot it on a Red Dragon 6K camera whole bunch of light to get the super white clean look that we we're going for as well as allow a macro probe lens that was a tough lens to work with for that super white clean look we we're going for uh, i won't get too far into why that was but uh it was a challenge and i think we pulled it off fairly well so super excited about that I've also been doing a ton of drone work. Uh, condo developments are going up like crazy, so I've been hired out to do a whole bunch of drone work for different condo developments around the GTA. Uh, not the most exciting work, but uh, fairly simple, easy, and um, fun to fly a drone for a day. So I can't complain about that either. Now in terms of YouTube, uh, I've worked on a whole bunch of personal projects and I've got a bunch of them shot, uh, some of them mostly edited, but uh, it's gonna be a bit longer for them to come out because of the mass amounts of work that I've been talking about already. Uh, but I've got one video coming out with my good friend Mel Poole. She's a certified mountain bike instructor and helped me work out some of the kinks I've had in my riding. Uh, we shot it, it's a bit of a cheesier video, but we had fun making it. So hopefully when it does come out, you'll enjoy that. Um, I did do the Cannonball 300 and that will be another kind of vlog documentary type of shoot. Uh, now I've partnered up with Arkell Bikepacking Bags for that one. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And I also have the Locals Episode 3 with Victoria. Talked about that a little bit earlier, but uh, all of these things are in the works and it will be coming out. Um, the big, big documentary that I've been working on for the last couple of years uh, up in Pekanjigum has been a tough one to film. Now I knew logistically it was gonna be tough anyways, because of how remote that community is, it's tough to fly in and fly out. And there's only certain times of the year that I can actually get out there myself and to coordinate with my job. Uh, so it's been tough working through that, let alone uh, the relationship with the OPP and the people of Pekanjikum has been strained for a long time. Um, if you're Canadian or American, you know that there's a lot of issues uh, between federal governments and the people that were here first. Um, I don't wanna to get too far into that because I don't know enough about it. I'm still learning a lot about the, these things uh, as a white guy, but um, what I'm focusing on is the bike shop up in Pekanjikum that New Hope Bikes uh, Andrew and Adam Belanger specifically from that they're working to keep that bike shop running and they have put a lot of time and effort into keeping it going keeping the donations rolling through and uh, make sure that people stay interested in supporting that bike program because it is something that's great for the kids up there they're taking ownership of it and uh, it's a really cool program that is hopefully going to spread throughout Canada um, with the pandemic, it's been made even more difficult because remote communities like that are even more susceptible to any disease or anything that comes in up there because they don't have the hospital infrastructure that the rest of Ontario has. So they have to be very cautious in who they let in. Now I'm double vaccinated now, but uh, they did have their uh, community closed off to the public for most of last year. Um, I was lucky enough to get up there and start to film some of the interviews and get some good b-roll up there But there's still a lot that I have to film and uh, to build the story that I want to tell I was able to cobble together a quick little portrait on one of the characters who will be in the final film Hopefully uh, Rusty Keeper. He is the guy who is running the shop up there. He's super passionate about bikes and uh, 
I'll leave this video um, with a little clip from that. Um, it's posted up on New Hope Bikes Instagram, but I will share it here as well. So if you feel so obliged, I would love it if you could support uh, the community up there. They've got an awesome program running and uh, I'll leave the link in the description for that as well below. So that if you want, you can donate to the community of Pekanjigum and their bike program because uh, apparently this year, all kindergarten grads were gifted a bike. That's just the best. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you right now. More content coming, I promise. It's gonna be slow, but keep your eyes peeled and uh, you'll, you'll see more from me eventually. Hopefully more back on the bike. I'd like to ride my bike again. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wish that bikes were, were just used, were the only thing being used around town, you know? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I, that's what I really want to for Pekanjigo, for everyone, for everyone just to use bikes, so less pollution and I usually get around town faster with a bike. My name is a Rusty Keeper and I, I've, been in, I've been in the program for about since 2017, 2017, yeah. Uh, it feels good, it feels good to promote, to promote good exercise for people to be active, yeah. Uh, my favorite par part of the program is uh, fixing the bikes, getting, getting them right all, yeah. I like, I like working, I like working on them. And yeah, I just like working with my hands. Just around smart road. Get in, get in on the main road. Um, I'll do it on. Alright, take care.